Welcome to Technically Speaking, the show for the technically challenged. Today we're going to hit the top 10 tech tips and tricks. Well, my top 10. Some of these are things you might already know, some of these might be a complete surprise, and some of them made the list because I find myself saying them over and over and over to people. Our first five tips have to do with cell phones and our second five tips with computers. Nowadays, our cell phones are as powerful as computers were just five years ago. That cell phone that's in your purse that you probably use to play solitaire, maybe look at crazy cat videos, that's more powerful than what was in our offices just five years ago. So, tip number one, one that I wish a lot of people would realize. If your phone is ringing and you need to silence it in a hurry, any button will do. You don't need to be looking around at your phone in the middle of a concert or, or church or something like that, trying to figure out how to turn it off, save a message. Hit any button, whether it's a power button, a volume button, it doesn't matter. The phone will automatically stop ringing. The call is still coming through, so it will be sent to voicemail so you can deal with it later. Just touch anything. You might have learned this tip already if you were ever rummaging for a ringing phone in your purse. If you grab it and hit a button, it'll stop ringing. So remember that the next time you forget to silence your phone. Tech tip number two. As opposed to when we want a silent phone, this is, has to do with when we want a loud phone or a loud iPod. You might have heard about an instant way to make your music louder is to take your iPod and put it into a cup. So if I were playing music on my iPhone here, and I don't have any speakers, I could just put it into a cup or a bowl. Much better. Now, it does work much better if you use a ceramic or a glass cup. If you put it in plastic, it'll be louder, but it won't be that much better. And to make it even better, I'm going to add a little bit of fabric to my cup. It'll cut down the distortion. So here's our volume and instant speakers. Now that's enough for a party. Okay, so we know how to make it quiet. We know how to make it loud. But if you're carrying around a cell phone all day, someday you're going to drop it. The most common thing to happen, cell phone breakage, has to do with cracked screens or dropping it in water. Well, I carry a cell phone all day long, so certainly at some point I'm going to crack my screen. Here's one with a cracked screen now. Now, there are places, even in the shopping malls, that will repair a screen. But if you are a little short on funds, or you want to just keep things going, there are some options available to you. The first thing you'll want to do with a cracked screen is make sure you don't cut yourself on the glass. They do sell screen guards for your screen that you could stick right on. I just used ordinary packing tape for mine. So I put some packing tape over the screen, and while you can certainly see the crack, once the phone is on, that crack becomes a lot less noticeable. You can adjust your brightness settings to different ways so you can see what's going to be best to be able to see all the apps on your phone. And at least while you're saving up to get a replaced screen, you won't cut yourself. You certainly don't want to cut yourself on your face or cut your finger when you're swiping. Now what about if you drop your cell phone in water? Or if your water bottle leaks all over your cell phone when you come home from the gym? There is a fix for that too. The first thing you'll want to do, because presumably your phone is no longer working, is to take the phone apart. That means everything. Take it out of the case. I'm going to take off all the parts of this one. Take out the battery. You want to take everything apart so you can dry it out. And the best way to dry out a cell phone is not by using a towel and wiping it down. The best way is actually with a bag of rice. So you're going to fill a baggie with rice. And after you've taken your phone apart, put all the parts, including the battery, put them all into the rice bag and zip it up. Now, 
They say to leave your phone in here for five days, changing the rice every day. The rice is absorbing the moisture out of the cell phone from places you can't even see. After five days, you're going to take the phone out, plug it in, and we're going to hope. I've said, I'll say I've had about 50% luck with this. I wish I could say I had more than 50%, but you know what? If it's a $200 iPhone, 50% is better than nothing. I did just have an iPhone and an iPod recently get drenched. After five days, one out of two turned on. Not bad odds. So if, whether you cracked your screen or got it all wet, it is salvageable. We'll move on to tech tip number four. My battery is always dead. Well, I sometimes feel like that too. There's lots of different tips on how you can preserve your battery life on your phone from turning off apps, lowering screen brightness, but quite honestly, the thing that drains your battery more than anything is when your cell phone is searching for a signal. See, if you have your cell phone and it doesn't pick up a signal, the cell phone tower is too far, you only have one bar or no bars of service, your cell phone is actually using more and more battery life just trying to get that signal. If you know you're going to be someplace that the signal is very, very low, perhaps you're out camping or hiking in the wilderness, and you know you're not going to get a signal, turn the phone off. It'll save your battery, and then when you do need it, you can turn it back on. But your phone is going to use twice as much battery life if you're in a low area rather than in a high activity area, just trying to reach out to that signal. So if it's going to be that bad anyway, just turn it off. It'll save your battery. And finally, for our cell phones, tech tip number five. I wish I had a piece of paper. Well, we don't always have a piece of paper with us or the paper that we want. These are all tips that you probably have thought of, but I'm amazed how many people haven't. First of all, email yourself before you go any place. Email things to yourself. It's a great way of keeping documents with you, whether it's travel documents or what time events are going to happen, directions to the restaurant, etc. Just email them to yourself. You can access them anytime from your phone or computer. It's kind of like having all your paperwork with you all the time. If you need a voice recorder, to suddenly record a shopping list or something else. Most of our cell phones do come equipped with some sort of voice recorder, but you might not be able to find it. The easiest thing is just to put it in camera mode. Your cell phone is going to have two different camera modes, still pictures and video pictures. Put it on video record. Even if you're not shooting a movie, it's still a voice recorder. It's a great way to take down a shopping list. And finally, don't forget that you have a camera with you at all times. Whether you're trying to remember where you parked your car in a big busy shopping center, or you just had a car accident and you need to take pictures, or perhaps you're sitting in the doctor's office reading magazines and you see a recipe you want, take a picture. It's a great way of preserving things for the future without writing them down. That brings us through our cell phone tips. Next, some computer tips for you.